So starting out, let us go in and just take a look at our circle. And I realized that our circle probably needs to be about that size in the grand scheme of things compared to what we're looking at in the image, maybe even something like that. But what we're looking at here is just way too much. So let's first disable our lattice and we're going to go in and just make some modifications to the unmodified version of this mesh. This was a topic of a previous topological study. However, even at the time I was thinking, you know, we could probably make it a little more optimal. So I'm going to snap my 3D cursor to this location. We also need to enable extras so that way we can see what's going on along with the 3D cursor because I previously disabled it for presentation purposes and here we are in it again about to begin making some corrections. So I'm going to press Control shift s and we're just going to save this with a underscore 1 to indicate that this is a kind of new path that we're going on. And from here I'm just going to select some faces. It doesn't really matter where I start with this. However, I do not want to select this object at the moment. And let's just control plus, just grow this until we have a nice amount of selection. And from here, let's press period and set it to 3D cursor. And we'll just scale this in. And we see that when we scale it, we're actually sinking it into the surface because of where our 3D cursor pivot points at. So the first thing that comes to my mind is pressing Control G and adding this to a group so I don't have to make the selection again. And we're going to just extrude this over to the mirror point, snap our cursor there, then delete the point so we have our cursor kind of up in the air in the junction mirror area. And let's just select the point, press Shift G, Vertex Group, and we have our selection back again. And this time, let us attempt to scale it in. And I, I'm also keeping in mind that we're also messing with the base as well, and we're by no means being accurate with this just really having some fun and just showing the pain that comes with having to make edits to subdivision geometry after the fact, because you know sometimes you're wrong. Sometimes you've added 800 incorrect loops committing to a design that's incorrect. So let's talk about what it's like to actually have to go in and correct such things. So I'm just gonna select these, G, Y, and we're just making things back congruent again. This whole area has gotten off track so let us just grab both of these loops and we also want to grab this one just so we can bring it down exactly to this area where it was perfectly flat before. We'll kind of relax the geometry around it a little bit. That area is going to be a point of contention always. But let us look at this area because we definitely did some damage in here. Are we looking at solidify? because we do not need to be looking at solidify in edit mode, except it does tell us that we need to do a few slides and just get our topology back in order because we could just ignore this because it's just the inside of a circle, but I care. And I also remember that this particular circle did not have a lot of flexibility whenever it came to us sliding geometry around. So we have to do it with care. because we definitely don't want to mess up the profile of the circle. In fact, these areas are looking highly compromised, but just a little bit of slide GG and we're back in business. So we take a look at this and our changes are a success, depending on how you define success. For me, it's just surviving. I have a survivalist mentality whenever it comes to subdivision and especially geometry in certain shapes. Certain shapes are just a pain level that I just don't even want to begin to fathom. So let's go ahead and jump back into Lattice and we see that our circle is a little more accommodating. And I should have taken a screenshot of what we had at the beginning versus what we're looking at now. But in all my practice runs of coming back to this, the first thing I always did was go in and adjust the size of this circle. So I'm glad that we were able to knock that out the way. The other thing is, you know, I look at the curvature that's happening between the piece that we aspire to make and this piece. And while I don't have any specific diagrams about the uh, intricacies of this pressure washer, I can only surmise that, you know, sliding this geometry a bit away from that curvature area will utilize one of my favorite rules about subdivision and that's that the simpler your geometry is the more it'll just have its way. If we had these tight it would be a very tight turn 
but because we have it loose, it's actually more rounded. So just a little more rounded. We could slide it out even more or even just dissolve this flow entirely to really give it a very big turn. You know, we would have to dissolve that one as well. And now we have an even larger turn than before. And let's just see what we dissolve there. And uh, you know what? I think I'm going to go with that. A lot of um, hard decisions being made at this time, but we're just making them willy nilly, aren't we? You know, even though having these two too tight together could result in a not being created, I'm still just betting on equalizing the geometry being a assistive factor and keeping things under control. So if we just look at this and zoom out, you know, we're just a little bit closer. And so now it's the front piece. The front piece was kind of an obsession to me on the initial modeling of this. I mean, the deformation is definitely not helping us today, but I could have sworn that whenever I look at this shape, I see something like this happening, where there's just a very large chunk taken out and that this piece actually extends down a little lower than I actually gave it credit for. So let's try making it work. You know, we don't have the most geometry and more than likely we're going to need to probably calm down with all of our lattice activity because we just went too far with it. Like we could probably lattice it again after the fact, but really something like that is speaking to me and we could actually come back and add another lattice and deform it from this state where we actually maintain what we have going on with the front. But because of what we have going on, we don't want to just sacrifice it. So I am going to try to generate a turn on this form, even though it's probably not going to allow it, where basically we select some loops, subdivide, and we add our loop that's going to basically be the turn of this shape and just try to reinforce it in a positive way. And we see that we did not reinforce it. Absolutely. It kind of went wayward in its teenage years, but now we are back on track and, you know, we're sending this mesh off to college. Maybe, you know, like I said, we could never pat ourselves on the back, especially because there's always going to be someone delighted to tell me how inaccurate it is. The other thing I'm looking at is that this area is kind of a really flat angle. So, you know, we're just modeling this by eye, but let's say I really wanted that. I'm going to select everything to here and let's also think about the future. Let's think about the future. I'm going to select everything all the way to here. Control shift tilde. We'll roll it down to say three and let's just straighten this up. And maybe something like this, you know, don't want to sacrifice too much here and get our curvature back to being hard, but let's right click and finish that. And then to really make this decision whole, we're going to need to do some accountability reshuffling. So I'm going to add a loop here to get to this location. And then we can grab this entire loop and dissolve it after we hand it off to this area responsibly. So not the best way to deal with this, but, and it looks like this loop is actually too important. This loop is like, you know what? I'm not going to resign. That's fine. You don't have to resign. Sorry, I was a bit drastic in asking loops to resign just for me to get some leniency and our flexibility, but it doesn't appear that we will need to terminate to everyone on this floor today. So let us go in and send in a couple of new higher edges. And we're now looking at something a little bit more like that, which feels a little bit closer to the image. Now the thing about modifiers and hard ops is that all the modifiers added to an add modifier have something special to it. Like there, because of what we wanted to do as far as making it interactive or add additional options that were previously unavailable with the general add a modifier, that's why these are all options. So we see that one thing that's the same is control clicking adds a new modifier basically on all of these just control clicking will add a new iteration of a modifier so recently i had someone ask why does hard ops have the ability to control click to add a new modifier even when you have a, another one in the stack and it's because you definitely want to add a new modifier to the correct area and sometimes you actually want to add one in addition to the one that you already have and so for that reason we have this additive behavior going on it's really not as important as a, me having to even explain it, but just to cover that in the context of what we're doing. So 
because of the lack of parrying, I was able to just willy-nilly scale the empty and object mode, which is just great. And that means that we can just grab this and bring it up. Let's control Z and bring it down. Let's add a span on Z. And this will at least separate the top from the bottom whenever we bring it up. I'm a big fan of using B spline as a default. However, if you're more of the linear persuasion, that is also an option. So we're going to just try to move this in a controlled fashion and not destroy what we have going on with the bottom, but still get the curvatures going on with the top. So I am the biggest fan of lattice. You know, if someone was like, hey, what's the most stable things in Blender? I'd, be, I'd say lattice and hooks, just because I've never read a crash report about them. I mean, we've had some issues with them in the past where they weren't working right, but as far as Blender goes, those things are perfecto. But they're so old school, right? Uh, their applications and workflow is, it requires a little creativity, as does all of Blender. A little creativity and you're, you're on your way. But if you have no creativity, you're probably um, not gonna have the greatest time utilizing Blender, especially because some of its solutions require creativity. I mean, I feel that it's just creativity to implement the 3D cursor into your workflow. You know, if you're slapping your head and you're like, man, I'm already doing that, man, then, you know, great. That's, that's the Blender way. But, you know, sometimes I get people that come over to Blender and the first question they ask me is, yo, dog, how do I turn off the 3D cursor? And I'm like, oh, let's, let's also not do any marking. I was about to do some marking, but we don't have to do all that. And as far as solidify goes, we can solidify after subdivision so we can maintain our sharp edges. And if we turn off, turn on auto smooth, then we can actually, you know, set an angle like 60, something high because we're dealing with subdivision and we actually have our curvature, but we also have like our sharp edges. So a little bit of subdivision, auto smooth, you know, hard surface modeling in here, but this is just us going in and just making some very small revisions to this shape. I also feel that this whole thing is rotated. I mean, if we look at the image, it definitely feels rotated. I'm not gonna model it that way. We'll just deal with that at a later point. You know, rotation is more of an object level kind of thing. But, you know, if we're gonna continue to be OCD about this, you know, or selective, depending on your perspective of my modeling style, we are going to bring this all the way over to the edge where it's needed and we'll bring this back to where it's needed because it wasn't let's get out a 3d cursor and i know this is a drastic move of geometry i mean the areas around it are like what is going on but you just walked into wallachia and vlad is out tonight just kidding so let us slide this geometry around So we get something that you know looks about right and keep in mind anytime you want to create a crease that's going to be a convergent so i mean bringing geometry together in closeness is going to create that hard edge if you're seeking a hard edge just create a convergence uh maybe not the best topological advice but i'm not a topological advisor um for this one we could also reinforce it on this side which i know is kind of crazy drastic and a bit advanced for us to be doing with such an edge but you know i don't know if this edge actually needs all of that reinforcement in fact if we slide all the way back it actually makes this angle also hard so maybe not the best solution we'll just gg slide that out and just take a look at what we have so far and all this going on in the middle we don't even have to talk about i mean we're not going to be doing cross dissections of this thing afterwards we're just having fun with the pressure washer. Um, if you work for this company and you're watching, um, definitely not trying to infringe, just talking about the beauty of this thing you've constructed and also trying to convince users to um, give more time to their studies in hopes that they don't have to spend their lives using pressure washers for a living, but that's another talk. So just looking at this shape, just checking out the angles, really just analyzing this thing and thinking about what we did with our lattice. If I wanted to bring back a specific lattice, my favorite option is to go to modifier scroll and just scroll through the stack and then I can press tab and just by control clicking or shift clicking, I can actually reveal individual lattices. Here I'm able to toggle this lattice off and on, which is just 
fantastic. I'm also able to toggle this lattice off and on, which is just great. And you know, once this model is uh, complete or I'm done with it, it'll be added to a playlist. So if you're like trying to catch the entire Power Washer Mega Series, you know, you'll be able to. Just really looking at this and just thinking about how much width we want to give it because we could still take this out, make it wider and get away with it. But instead, let us now progress to the next step. All right, so this area that I'm about to model, I am pretty nervous about it because every time I've modeled it, I've failed. So what makes this any exception? Well, I'm recording it this time. We are going to just get to this level of subdivision. And let's just shift click, which will give us a duplicate of this mesh, which as we see, because of the level three subdivision, it's quite heavy and also I'm trying to select this loop and mesh machine just getting in the way and this loop is just way too complex in fact this loop is way more complex than last time so let's get rid of that let's take this down to subdivision level one and let's just scroll through the modifiers again this time i'm going to shift click once more and this time we have a much more sparse loop and i'm just not really digging it i feel like we can get something even thinner I might be um, I might be expecting too much because we do want the rounding of the subdivision to come into play with what we're trying to do. So what I'm going to do is go through modifier scroll again, wait till I get to subdivision and then just shift click to take this and we will do with it what we will, which in this case is us just ripping all of these edges off. And we could even press control I and just select everything that isn't those edges. And now we have, this as our selection. Because Mesh Machine's still in my edit mode, let's just Alt-X and gesture flip it over. And I am going to just select all of that, Control-X. These are flat edges. I'm not gonna let myself be stressed over flat edges. And even inside of this, we have enough geo that it should be fine. However, we see that things are not fine. I'm going to, instead of reevaluating my two lattice decision and, you know, we probably should re-extract it from the lattice mesh, but instead I'm just going to use proportional edit. No, let's, uh, let's do it right. I'm just going to shift click smart apply. And that's just going to give me a duplicate. And let's just select our edge just like before going all the way around. The downside is that we also have solidification in this calculation as well. So we definitely want to make sure we're not selecting an interior loop. So let's control I, X, and from here, press Alt X, we'll take it to the other side. And now we have our selection. So once again, this time without the inaccuracies that we had trying to omit the wrong modifiers, you know, those sort of things happen. But as you see, you know, it's just a matter of just getting in there analyzing what happened what went wrong and how you can you know best go about completing it but our goal is definitely to provide you the tools to um, not only make those decisions but execute those decisions that you've made um, of course when it comes to modifier and, and applying and especially on a batch level i definitely recommend batch operations is something that they excel at greatly and something that we don't even attempt to deal with because batch operations just does it so well so if you're trying to actually apply a bunch of modifiers on specific meshes, then that's where batch operations comes in play versus hard ops. But we also do support multi-mesh, but it's really on a cursory level, not trying to uh, do anything mind blowing. So just try to get the job done. So the other thing is I'm going to press Alt X and we're going to Alt scroll to, uh, let's see, we want to use bisect mod and just go ahead and flip that. And the other thing is that you know, because of our subdivision mod placement, I'm pretty sure that we're looking at an inaccurate display of it. You know, because the solidify is there, we see that solidify has added an additional layer of sub D density being visible whenever we view it. So we'll just turn that off for now. Really having an optimal sub D display of wireframe is just a pipe dream. You know, sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. And I'm just thinking about how I want to go about doing this shape because like I said, it, it wasn't easy the first time, it wasn't easy the second time, and this time is like the fourth time and 
it's not going to be easy. So I'm just going to select all these points and I'm going to press E, maybe to press O, press E, S in order to scale it out. And we're just going to bring this piece out. And maybe something like this, just doing a little bit of sliding. I don't even know what the result is yet. But I do know that these normals are not facing the correct direction. Even the wireframe was selling us more than the solid mode does, which is just shameful. I hope Blender gets their normal display back, or at least letting people know, hey, those normals are, are flipped, yo. Flipped, flipped like hell. Those normals are hella flipped, bro. Um, you know, I'm pretty sure in the 3D Mesh Toolkit they have some stuff that tells you that, but... You know, I used to love it back in the day. The normals just look so terrible. You'd just be shamed. Um, <laughs> maybe maybe Blender didn't like that philosophy. So I am going to press V and rip this point off, which basically frees everything else that was unextruded. So we're just going to separate that into its own mesh. And we're just going to begin trying to deal with the side because when we select this loop, we probably need to bring it down but we also need to move this some places. So I'm seeing it somewhere like this. In previous experiences, I actually had too much geometry going on here. So I was, I was unable to get it to solve well with the shading, which was kind of an embarrassment. But this time I feel that we have a better chance at being successful. Of course, I'm gonna snap this to the surface just to make sure it's perfectly congruent. And we're just analyzing and looking and plotting and scheming and just thinking about what we have and from here press K and we'll cut across to something like that select all to here and remove it and move this to last we'll slide to and from just seeing what we're getting you know this is such a tough area to negotiate you know you can't really move a lot of geometry around both ways you can only move it around on the side that's not connected to the piece itself that is penetrating so let's up the ante you know that's all we can do you know in these times of indecision we just up the ante and hope that you know our geometry is simple enough that we can get back in and correct it so for this area I see that it comes down pretty simply um, or not very far compared to the other area. And from here, we're just sliding points to kind of alleviate what we've done with this area, even though really I need to just get in with mirror tools and write this wrong that we're creating but we're just having some fun right with manual tools however i am going to select it press Control alt tilde set our points to five and begin really working on an arc that the whole family can enjoy so something like that let's bring it down and just really looking at what we have here for this i feel that this comes down about this far and also this far out you know, it's such a hard decision to make whenever it comes to geometry, but we're just going to make our decisions and just hope that, you know, we can live with them. Just moving things around, doing entire lasso select movements of this loop in order to maintain the curvature that we kind of hacked in there. And also to assist subdivision with its display of this, I'm going to select this entire loop. We'll mark it as sharp. We'll select this entire loop, mark it as sharp as well. And from here, if I just save the file and we just press uh, control one, two, three, we can begin adding our levels of subdivision, just seeing exactly what we're getting whenever it comes to our money's worth with these areas. Of course, never displayed in edit mode, not even once, just kidding. Um, there's times for it. I was meaning to talk about it in that handle video, but um, you know, the video that I ended up uploading was a recording of me practicing it after I got frustrated after a 40 minute recording. So in that video I failed. And so I just was like, you know what? I'm just gonna practice. And then I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna record it. And you know, that'd be life. 
not all videos are intended to be narrated. Even though I'm glad people are tuning in just for that. Bunch of weirdos. Um, let's just begin sliding these points around. And really just looking at this thing. This thing is such a piece I'd like to <laughs> assign to someone else. You know, um, the blizzard way, apparently. But let's scale this. I've been taking a lot of shots at blizzard. It's just crazy. It's, it's just so crazy to me that, you know, their game started going downhill. And this was why. But... Also, I had so many friends that were like, it's my dream to work at Blizzard. It's like, Blizzard would have loved to have you, let me tell you. So let us grab these and just mark them as sharp. In retrospect, Blizzard would have loved to have you, you know, now we found out. But, you know, at the time, nobody knew. They were just in for a surprise, just like League of Legends. Man, I love this game. This game loves you. Let's merge at center. I know, making some really imprecise, hard decisions. And that's what this piece is to me. It's like working off faith. But as we mark things, we're able to maintain our integrity throughout these levels of subdivision. And using just this one ref with this blown out front, I can tell, no, I can't tell anything. Um, this is like the meme, can't see shit, Captain can't see anything now whenever it comes to this like who knows what's going on with it so we are just going to grab this and let's extrude it across let's add another point bring it over and we're just kind of evening things out i mean really just kind of working off of blind faith let's also use s sharp because i'm not going to keep marking edges and then marking them sharp, you know, it's crazy business. If you're doing it over and over, you know, we probably got a tool for that. Just, just uh, kidding, but completely serial. So I'm bringing this edge down. And because I know that everything's going to just arc like Noah, we are able to just make this an entire face fill selection, which is the most beautiful, of course, but it's a start. And inside this area, we have so much geometry we have to associate with a proper conclusion. So we're just going to just start working down the line, bringing down all the verticals that I think we'll care to deal with. And then everything else is going to be a, a zonal, you know, we call them a zonal out in the field. Just, just playing. We don't, nobody calls it that. Sometimes my girlfriend calls me out on that stuff. I'll just say, you know, we, we call it that. She's like, who, who calls it that? You don't know anybody. You know, like, come on, you gotta, you gotta do me like that. Come on. <laughs> and she doesn't take any crap from me. But let's um, select this and I'll press I, and press B, and keep my girlfriend out of this. And we will just set a boundary loop, of course, because a boundary loop is just, it's just protection for everybody. And so with a connection here, and a connection there. We're pretty Dunskis. I mean, we're not Dunskis. We could be more Dunskis, Broskis. You know, like something like that. And then at least we have a good quad flow happening. You know, of course, we have to begin sacrificing to maintain that flow all the way across. In fact, something in my heart just compels me to join those and then offset my triangle to be one flatty over, which, you know, I always get theoretical whenever it comes to topology, which is why I recommend, you know, definitely looking at Aramis 3D or someone like that for your um, intimate topology, because my opinions on it are just so trash due to time that I could model the exact right way if I had to, but why? Why bother? You know, I never was able to get to the bottom of the why. I mean, I get it with quads and deformation, sure, important stuff. I get it, but 
I see some ingons deforming in pretty sexy ways. I mean, we can't export them out to another application, of course. You know, we're not those kind of people, but ingons, they make it. So this flow is super important. This is a presidential flow that we're, we're creating the foundation of. And it also appears that it terminates very early before it ever makes it to an adequate destination. So I'm just adding this loop just so I have the flexibility to slide this around. We could just go ahead, go back and dissolve that. But really we need a try there. So that way we have our control over this particular area and also maintain a nice quad flow. Even though this area is just a big flat, we're also going to need to add one additional flow that is going to have to cut all the way along like this. And just thinking about it, thinking about it, thinking about it. You know, what you doing? I'm just thinking about ge geometry, what you doing? And it appears that we're going to have to do something like that, you know, something like that. And finally over here, we, res we get the result of something like that. So check out my Broadway production of something like that. So moving on, we're just looking at our shape, getting wacky, you know, longer you spend with a pressure washer, the more you want to just pressure wash your face. Uh, just kidding. Just had to say that. It's an easy joke. But no, I, I'm not. Um, yeah, I want people to get the wrong impression. I'm not wanting to pressure wash my face. But you know, the longer you spend with a pressure washer, the more you want to pressure wash your face, you guys. So, you know, watch yourselves. You know, when it comes to this, I just have no idea what this shape truly is. I just don't. So I'm going to just you know, like, like George W. Bush, I'm gonna make some shit up. All right. So we are going to extrude this down. And that's it. That's the end. And let's press period and make sure we're on medium point as Z zero. That's not going to work. Let's select from here to here. We're kind of being a little drastic and that's also very drastic. Let's SZ zero, you know, just looking at it, just thinking about it, you know, thinking about hard, hard and crazy decisions that we could be making, but maybe something like that, just so we have a really crisp edge. And then we can, you know, even slide this over here, making this into this. I know not the best decision, but you know, I could get on Google and start looking up pictures of this thing torn apart, but my thing is always, you know, where's the line? <laughs> uh, no, I'm kidding. The line is the actual asset. The line is making the asset, especially if your client is like, hey, I need this pressure washer for my musical short going on Broadway about pressure washers. And I don't know where I was going with that, but you know what I'm saying? You get those clients. Yeah, I was once going to do a little short about bus stops because I spent so long with bus stops in life, especially moving to this town. Um, bus stops weren't a big thing where I came from because it was like a big country town. So also where George W. Bush was from. And, you know, bus stops weren't a big thing. But when I moved here and I started working jobs, it's like, man, these buses are so nuts. It's so nuts waiting so long for buses. You know, it made it apparent like, hey, there's a time inefficiency here that can be utilized for the betterment of myself. So, you know, I started reading all these PDFs about Blender back in the day. You know, I always tell people, I'm like, man, I'm pretty sure I read every Blender book ever made. Like, not even joking. You know, because, yeah, I took it serious. I was like, man, I must be competing against a bunch of Asians, you know. Like, I figured Blender was dominated by... The Asian community, you know, before I ever became a member of Blender Artists and realized that, you know, everybody's um, at various levels, you know, everybody's, everybody's at various levels and everybody's struggling, you know, they're in 3D for various reasons, but, you know, everybody's um, on their own path, you know, I don't want to say everybody's struggling, there's some people who are very confident, but I mean, even I consider myself um, someone that's struggling, I mean, I'm struggling right now against this pressure washer, you guys. 
but we're just having some fun with it just playing with possibilities you know nothing concrete we could always get in and slide these loops away and slide them back to just kind of reestablish them i mean this area is just a big blur so welcome to today's episode of blurry images you know <laughs> however it's not blurry images if i keep using the same blurry image and also off on the side i do have just a bajillion pictures but i'm not even looking at these even though they will come into play later like this shape is so interesting but we're just uh getting in here just having some fun just playing with subdivision you know slide into slide it from grab inverts where you're from and just working on this shape you know just terrible terrible shape but that's precisely why I wanted to do a video talking about it because you know not all these uh, chapters are about you know getting sub D perfectly they're just really to just show like <laughs> sometimes all you can do is survive and study it for the rest of your life you can keep remodeling the same asset like a lunatic like me because that is something I would do I would just model something over and over I mean if I truly truly care like uh, whenever it comes to robot characters, you know, people think I do a lot of the same characters in videos. Man, there are so many variations of the same characters. You know, they, it'd be DLC in a video game. But, you know, I feel that there's a, there's a multiverse and an ether and somewhere in it is the goal that you're looking for. And that maybe the one that you obtain on your first stroke of the canvas isn't the right one always talking about multiverses but I'm telling you before spider-man makes it synonymous and everyone's talking about multiverses again or loki i was always talking about it and we're just going to turn that into a face with f and this is what our shape is looking like so far so just trying not to get too distracted just really judging our proportions very hard this area is definitely a lot fatter than the credit that we're giving it with this piece. This piece is so big, but really this one is the one that comes down. This one's like a third of this. So we could bring this all the way back up and have it terminate earlier in it, like here, which is probably a little bit more accurate according to the picture. But, you know, we're looking at subdivision commitments we made for a Friday night, so Making such plan changes is not going to be easy. I mean, how hard could it be to reduce an area to something simpler? Maybe that's just kidding. It's not that simple. That was totally a big mistake. Um, maybe not that far, but we also want to remark this one completely as sharp because it got taken over a little bit. And let's just look at it from the top view and just begin making some mesh changes. I mean, really hard decisions are being made here, but that's what I look at as modeling, you know, just hard decisions. And sometimes I will make a hard decision very fast because I already recognize it's a hard decision. It's like, you're not gonna waste my time decision. I've got other decisions to make, more pertinent decisions. Let's SX and move this back over to make it congruent maybe take this one bring it in and just really thinking about how we want this to flow so maybe something like that could work but for that to work we do have to slide this up and we also have to slide this up Just moving some points around you know it's never easy making these choices but they have to be made and so looking at it back from the side we see that this one comes up this one comes up we're probably making so many mistakes but like I said this has uh, been a piece I've attempted multiple times and every time it only gets harder just kidding but it definitely doesn't get easier Every time, you know, the best you could hope for is that you learn something. So I definitely learn something from this piece every time. That this piece is deceptive. And let us 
just turn this into a quad. I mean, might as well so just staring this right in the face. And let's get in and just begin looking at this piece. You know, from this top view, I really feel that this should come down and that this should come down, which is not the smartest decision to make for this particular area. You know, really compromising what we've built here and what our goals were just to create this, but that's subdivision for you. It's a P-I-T-A. And making edits is just one of those things. Like I used to hate doing this back in the day. It's like, oh man. And also because we have a lattice, we got to accommodate for that with our geometry. So I'm in, th in actuality, I'm actually pulling this geometry really far in order to overlap that area. But we could fight with this literally all day. So what are you doing today? Just kidding. <laughs> It'd be like, yeah, let's get in, fight it all day. I'm telling you, it's just so inefficient for time. So definitely be cautious with such such choices. So just GG sliding this over. And we also see that this area is unresolved. So by joining it here, we've created a bit more of a complication. If we press J again, we've complicated that complication just a little bit more. But for what we're going for, might be necessary. I mean, I was almost thinking we should just terminate what we have built up in this area, which we could get rid of one loop, which would make it look just a little bit better. Helping this area just kind of come together. But you know, really looking at this from the side, we want to make sure that we get this particular shape looking good, you know, at least according to the picture that we're referencing. So we'll set this to five and just get in with the mirror curve, which is going to destroy it. If you want it to be preserved better, you're going to have to give it extra points. But then at that point, you're using more points than the actual curve that you're modifying, which is probably not the best use of your time. So let's right click and cancel or right click and finish. One of my favorite things about mirror tool but not so favorite of mine that I would want to do it at hops. You know, we got to right click has to cancel. But with mirror tool is it's, you know, sometimes I'm just using the curve and I'm like, all right, right click done. I'm done. And that just does the job for me. So we are just destroying this corner. You know, with every part, I pick an area that's like more crucial than the rest. And then I attempt to preserve it. And so for me, it's always been this particular slope is being able to keep it under control. So let's grab this loop and we're just bringing it up, just trying to match the image the best we can. You know, maybe to something like this. And let's also just begin sliding some loops around just to recircle it. You know, equalizing is sometimes the easiest way to get things back to being congruent. And we're just inspecting our planes and just seeing what we've been given. Lowering points ever so slightly on the Z because I'm obsessive. And we see that this also needs to come up a little bit more. This should come up some more. But how much up does it need to come? That is a question that will haunt us into the night. So maybe something like that. However, I feel that this particular curve as a whole should be bigger, like something like this, which this is a really weird way to recurve a circle. But, you know, I just see it as bigger now when I come back to it, you know, the more shapes I have added, the better it assists me with my solution and getting things together and as far as like the relationship with each other. But let's just continue sliding. And grab these points and begin moving them around. And this particular area and this area also have unsolved endings. So we could just resolve it just like that and they're resolved you know 
resolving it is just a matter of getting them to a happy ending. But just because you see a unhappy ending on a mesh of mine, doesn't mean that I can just you know, tap that thing. Sometimes I just get past the point of tapping or past the point of caring as Carl from Aqua Teen would say, you know, like I could be so obsessive with this mesh that it takes up my entire day and then I don't get to play any Ghost of Tsushima or we just, you know, we revisit it and we revisit it and we just fine tune our workflow a little bit more every time till we have a proper understanding of the part at hand. But either way, I'm just blabbing. So I still feel the back is very big compared to what we gave this rim. I mean, we were very generous with this rim and that part cannot be overstated. So I'm gonna bring this up to maybe here And let's deselect some edges just because we don't want it to get out of control. So maybe something like that. And let's just begin lowering these loops. You know, the next topic of discussion that came up into my mind was discussing Marvel's what if, but I want to spoil you guys in case y'all y'all love it. Dang, getting phone calls. Silence phone calls. I wonder who's calling. I feel like I'm always getting distracted in the middle of these recordings. Like it's like all these videos where I'm talking for over an hour. It always uh, is punctuated by me having to take a break and resolve a phone call. And usually it's about something um, insignificant. You know, I had that one guy call. He's like, yeah, I'm just testing my phone to make sure. Call, well, call someone else. Man. Get out of here. Try to do stuff. So looking at this piece, I'm also looking at this cut in that's happening that's going around to the other side. And it appears that we at least got that in. So this is where we are at now. So looking at this and zooming out, I feel that we're able to at least accomplish the basic modeling of this particular area. So the next part is actually making it capable for subdivision. So as always, I'm going to, do we have a junk collection? Usually I will shift D, duplicate an object and move it to a new collection called junk. And not all caps, it's not junk, but you know, lowercase. And so we'll just put it in junk. And then that way, if I make a tragic mistake that I have to come back to, we can. So I'm just going to apply hops or apply mirror. We're going to take this into local mode and let's think about how we want to refine this for subdivision. You know, if we press Alt V and we look at the wireframe, we look at the optimal display, this is what we would get if we applied one level of subdivision. And you might be looking at that thinking that that's okay. And you know what? That's okay. It's okay that you think it's okay, but also it's, it's okay. So, you know, two okays for everyone. Let's GG and slide, and we're going to add a loop here, but I'm going to right click and subdivide so that that loop falls short. And now we're just going to begin dealing with the whole subdivision conversion process. So, you know, first thing is we got to unmark all our sharp edges, but if we don't have them marked, then how do we know which ones are our edges? Because it gets a little blinding. So we're just going to bevel but press P and set our profile to one, even though really we don't need it. I mean, we could go with three edges, but I'm gonna go with two because I've just been experimenting with, um, you know, like I said, I'm always changing things up in my workflow. Um, there's no reason I'm using two loops. Um, if you wanna try it, give it a try, but you don't have to ask me about it. Like, it's just two loops. I'm just trying it out, that's all. So for this area, we're gonna to have to do a crissy cross like so, and then form our connection here, and then dissolve this edge and just pretend like we did not just do that. You did not just do, just kidding, but I did just do that. So let's press K. We're just gonna bring this unresolved ending out to here. Does it really matter? I mean, it does matter, but to me, less so. So as long as these loops are getting their proper reinforcement, we see that the flow that 
we were grabbing from this went all the way around to areas we don't want to mess with. And so just keep that in mind. We're just going to slide a loop in. And if we put a loop after sliding it, we see that, you know, we're going to have to add an additional loop after cutting this loop short. So we have a try next to a quad. Is that bad? Ask your therapist. So for this area, we did not give this the most optimal solve. And so that's why when subdivisions applied, we're looking at a slightly unusual solve. You know, like sub D will solve as sub D will solve. That's just sub D, sub D will solve. Like it'll turn an ingon into a shepherd's pie, but it will turn a um, triangle into a redirect. So that's why we're looking at these uh, redirects happening because you know, what else can you do? Uh, pretend you're um, cat mark ball and you're not wage fixing the industry for 50 years. You're thinking about the topic of um, subdivision, that part. Then, you know, how would you direct it? And I would direct it something like that, actually preserving the most important loop. And I can go in and dissolve that loop for it is garbage. You know, sorry to jump to conclusions, just it felt like a garbage loop to me. And so we're also going to grab this loop and slide it over to its nearest edge. This one already has proper enough reinforcement along with the redirect going all the way around. So all that's left is for us to basically have a loop on this edge, pressing E of course to make it even. And we see that we're starting to get a bit busy in this area. So how do we deal with that? Well, hmm, I'm gonna give this area a loop, but we are going to stop it short. So something like that, you know, really just thinking on my feet here and not really thinking in terms of planning or anything, which is why we have this black hole of nothingness that has to be resolved. So something like that brings everything back to being quads. We'll add a try here in exchange for all of these quads being a big redirect. For this one, maybe something like this but maybe not too tight for subdivision. And I'm just thinking about what the solves are gonna be whenever we're done with this. So right now I'm just offsetting triangles, which is just a common modeling technique, I guess. And by handing off both of these tries to the same area, we basically saw, well, I was about to say we basically solved it, but then the mesh made a fool out of me. You know, can't take a victory lap ever. So let's actually get in and solve it. So this whole bottom area, if we cut it like that, it becomes an incon, which means we can junction it with a quad. And all of this, while looking a little messy, um, isn't even absolutely necessary to clear. I mean, we're talking about the inside of this of this piece. You know, this is just excessive. So of course, I'm there. You know me. I'm in those messy meshes. You know, not no CAD meshes. Get that out of my face. But whenever it comes to just some uh, general Blender made polygon mesh, don't have me no nerves or voxelization either. Um, I received a comment the other day where someone was asking how I would approach uh, retopologizing, top, re God, crazy word, um, you know, something made with design magic. And, you know, my answer is the same way I would with a sculpt. You know, it's made of voxels, it's a mesh. You just get in, you remesh it. So now that we have reinforced all of our edges for better or worse, and as well as given ourselves excessive edges like these, we could easily go in and just remove these and no one would even notice their absence. Uh, same with these edges. We could just grab every other edge and dissolve it. And who would notice that? But let's just slap subdivision on it, come out of local mode and just take a look at what our mesh is looking like so far. So aside from this particular loop in the middle, looking just a little icky on a mesh that we haven't talked about for about 40 minutes, things are looking pretty good. You know, maybe something like that, a little more equalized. Like I said, for subdivision, it has to be at the tail end of the stack in order to be evaluated properly. 
And in this case, we already have it, but if we were to place it before our mirror, not only is it being evaluated improperly because we need the mirror, um, it also shows additional geo. So now we're looking at something like this for our piece, at least as far as how far we are with it. So we could have probably done without applying that level of subdivision because you know it really turned the front of this into a Cadillac. You know, we're gonna have to fight to, let's look at what we're dissolving. Who are you killing? All right, we could, we could live with that. And this area is just gonna be a struggle through and through, no doubt about it. So shift H and this is where we are so far. So if I wanted to have some fun with the, you know, we previously did the motor, like let's say I wanted to bring in the motor, I'll just control O and after saving this file, of course. And here's our engine that we did. And let's just turn off, turn on everything visible. So we want to see 3D cursor, we want to see extras. And we also want to see the grid floor because it grounds me to reality. So this is where we are. And in our collection, all we have are meshes. So let's just call this motor. You know, almost thinking, should it be motor or engine? It's hard to tell sometimes. And there we are. So we open up the next file, which is this one which is pre pretty much where we just were and if we just go to link we can link in from that previous file that we just touched once we find it and go under collection and just bring in a collection but it appears that I did not save what I just did so I'm going to open a file again because you know hard lessons you got to learn them twice So something like that, we've now saved it once again, or for the first time, depending on how you're looking at it. I'll have to have a forensic scientist check my keystrokes to make sure. It's like a press. So let's open this. We'll go to collection and choose collection. And I'm thinking because I'm dealing with a 3.0 file in a 2.0 or a uh, 2.93, that that's gonna cause some confusion but let us just place our motor. Of course, we're having to eyeball it as we've done most of this this whole time, but this is what we're looking at so far whenever it comes to us beginning to get this put together. So we see that there's also a mistake because there's more work that needs to be done here. So when we open this file up to do some more work, we're just gonna get in and actually do some work, but just wanted to just kind of demonstrate where we are so far with our uh, power washer that we've been working on this whole time, you know, with subdivision geometry, it definitely becomes a very involved process. So let's just turn this off and let's just peruse around our shape. Just remembering all the painful memories that we had of making things, converting things, merging things. Um, also, we cannot let that live. It's just tragic. And how, how am I going to fix that? So late in the game, how am I going to fix that? Um, door number one, I'm going to use sculpt mode and grab brush. And if you know me, I'm the crazy type of guy who will do that, who will go in and use grab brush to make these changes because, you know, otherwise we'd be using proportional editing. And if you think about it, grab brush is like proportional edit if it was like an active tool, which is what Sculpt feels like now. It feels like Sculpt has become an active tool. But when we get in and just start working it, we're able to keep our shape, have our curvature still, as well as get a closer bond with this area. You know, as we're perusing around it, you know, we don't want to see something that bad. So let's go back to object mode and jump back into perspective and we're just perusing our form. One of my favorite things to do. Anytime I'm done with the video, it's just nice to just get in and just see what I'm, see what it looks like so far. You know, we could also add the wheels, put the base on it, you know, really start to bring this thing together, which we'll probably start to do in the next video. However, I've been practicing a redo of the tire. So I might come back and do the redo, or we may just take the existing tire, which already has pretty good topology, but isn't entirely accurate. 
Someone wanted to point out that there's rectangles here and slightly shorter rectangles here and the pattern does this on the side. It's like really a terrible pattern to replicate. So I'm sure there's a smarty pants out there who's determined to prove me wrong, but it is, it's a painful thread, but we'll get in there. So with that, I'm going to wrap this video for now and thank everyone for watching and I'll see you guys next time.